Yeah, going, yeah. Right, it's day eight now. Um, once again, it is really cold. Barely feel my fingertips. Right, today we are going to first fix some of the electrical work. Um, and we're going to start insulating as well. We'll hopefully finish insulating. But we'll see how that goes because it's quite a bit of working it on your own. So I want to talk to you about electrical um Electrical work. Okay, so electrical work, it's dangerous. You can die. You'll get a shock and die, and you'll cause a fire, possibly, if you don't know what you're doing. So this is your disclaimer. It is only for competent people. Get an electrician in. Get the advice off an electrician if you're going to first fix it yourself, but you'll also find it quite difficult to get an electrician to come out and test it if he hasn't done the first fix. Because as we all know, they are the higher racket of the building game. They are top of the chain. So, electrical work. Um, I went to college for two years on the night, on the night college course, um, and I did level two, two, three, three, or city and gills. Adam, who is our in-house electrician, electrician, also did this up to level three. He has also got a 2394 and a 2395 sitting gills inspection and testing, and he is also 18th edition as well. So therefore, we are competent to install electrical circuits. Okay, so disclaimer, get yourself an electrician in. I'm just, this is a guide. This is how we do it. Okay, so lighting circuit, it's quite simple. You see that all right, David? Yeah. Lighting circuit. So there is your consumer unit, okay? Wow. Uh, right, so there is your consumer unit. They are your spotlights. I'm only putting three just for uh, clarity. And there is your light switch, okay? So the first circuit we'll be running will be the canopy lights, and then the second circuit we'll be running will be the interior lights. Now, it's all the same, basically. So there's your consumer unit, light switch, spotlights. So we will generally work backwards. So we'll go to our end light, next light, Next light, next light, and however many lights there are. And then we'll go back to our light switch, and then we'll have a feed from our consumer unit to our light switch, okay? That makes sense yeah. so far. David has also been to college as well, and he passed with a distinction, and David has brought his on-site guide, which you may want to purchase, um, and have a look at that, and it'll give you all the instructions you need as to what is allowed and what isn't allowed, basically. Okay, so I am gonna try and simplify this as much as I can. Uh, my terminology isn't very good as you often know, so get an electrician in and he will give you better terminology. Right, here is our canopy. We're gonna have three down lighters in our canopy. If David steps back a little bit, he'll be able to see. We've already measured this up, so we found the center. So we're gonna drop one in the center. We've also decided that we're gonna have to come in. Uh, did we say 250, David? 250. 250 on each side so that we can make it symmetrical and we're not going to hit a roof joist so that's what's going to happen there um i'm going to drill i'm going to drill the spotlights out we know that our spotlights have got a 70 mil cut out and there is our 70 mil bit um it's a hole so you need to be careful with these i once cut my thumb in half straight down the middle with a hole saw that was a painful experience Right, okay, so that's in, we're good with that. Um, what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna mark up for these. We've already me obviously measured the distance in. Um, and now we're gonna mark up ox tape. That will be going as well. I don't know if it will survive. Right, so there is our 250 in, Davey. Yeah, you see that? And I put my glasses on for this because when I'm looking at that black, it all blends into one. Right, so there's my 250, so I know that that is where my spotlight is going to be. I'm going to put it in the centre of that, which is there. So that's my spotlight, so I know it's there, that's correct, and I know it's centre there, so I'm happy with that. Now, this stuff is quite brittle, so you have to be careful when you go through it. Okay, so that's gone through there, nice. What will happen now, that spotlight will drop in there and the bezel will move left or right so we can centre it a little bit better if it's slightly out. Um, get that a bit out of there. So that's one. Um, we're having three spotlights in this canopy, simply because we either put three or four. In this occasion, it'll be three because four doesn't work out. Four wants it evenly. Um, because of the joist spacing, so it often happens like that. But 
on this size build, three will look nice anyway with it being a three meter. Um, spotlights, what do we use? We use um, LED GU10s out the David. Is that right? That's right, isn't it? Uh, you don't know, they're fire age. You do know, David. Right, again, we're good with that. Nice and steady. You might want to double check your measurements um, because once you've cut this, it's cut and that's the end of that, isn't it? I suppose. Um, we, you can replace the fascia, we have um, the soffit, we have done it before. When somebody put a hammer through it and didn't tell me and carried on with the work. Um, you might be watching this, you used to work here and I don't know exactly who it was. Anyway, that's that. Absolutely. I think I'm going to have to put some different gloves on David because my finger's absolutely killing me with cold. Right, so there's third one. I'm going to pop that out. Um, I cannot stress enough how dangerous electrical work is. Um, and also, as I said, you might find it difficult to get an electrician to sign it off here because they don't like to sign off other people's work. Um, but we have in-house electricians, so we're good for that. Right, there's my three spotlights. I'm happy with the location of them. They've all come out nice. Um, and I've no damage to that. I'm just going to try and warm this finger up. Right, my next thing is now, I know all my doors are sliding to the left as viewed from the outside. So my light switch will go either there or there, depending. It's probably going to go on that wall because time I put a plasterboard carrier in, there's nowhere for my light switch. So that's where the light switch will go. So we're going to work back to the light switch. Um, I'll explain that to you now. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So this will be our circuit. Um, spotlight, spotlight, spotlight. So we're going to go to that one, to that one, and then down to the light switch. I will explain the circuit a little bit more as, as we progress, but that's basically what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to get from there to there to there, back to the light switch. So with that in mind, we are going to work backwards. Um, first of all, I'm going to get a couple of screws and I'm going to put the slate button on the wall. And I'll explain why I've done that in a minute. Wrong bit, isn't it? I can't feel my finger, man. Um, there we go, that's the right bit. Right, just have a look at the angle I put this at there. You see it's like slightly going up, yeah? The reason for that being is I'm now going to put my drum of 1mm cable, twin and earth, on there like that and it won't fall off now because it's going up at an angle and I can pull it and use it as a reel. Um, you need to have it on something like this because if you start pulling it off, it's sat on the floor, it's all going to twist and be a nightmare for you. So that's my cable there, I'm good with that. What I'm going to do now, Dave, you might want to jump inside. Davey, yeah. have we got any gloves in van? Like a full finger glove. Will you go get us one please, mate? Right, come in here, mate, and then you better get a better look at what we're doing. Right. We need to drill the roof joists uh, to run the cable through. Now, what we sometimes do is drill these before we put them on, up, but I obviously forgot. So I'm looking at that hole there. I need to get across to there. So I'm gonna have to drill a hole in all these as they go down there. I've got a 10 mil drill bit in there. It's more than sufficient to get two um, cables through, which I will need to get two cables through, but you'll see that in a minute. So what I'm gonna do, um, we're gonna fill this with PIR insulation, rigid board insulation, yeah? But we won't be able to get the rigid in there. So what we'll do, we'll rock wool above the steel beam there. So I'm looking at that now. I've got quite a section there. So what I wanna do is put the cable over there so that, um, so that I can get the rock wool in there and it's not gonna be in the way, yeah? So I'm gonna lean forward like that and drill that through. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do, just for ease, I'll put two holes in it. 
possibly need another battery there, David, but we'll see how we're going. Right, so I've got two holes now in that. Yeah, I'm in the centre of that timber simply because I don't want to be hitting any nails or screws. Yeah, mate, another battery. Right. But, um, I've had this drill quite a while. It smells like it's burning there, but... Drop it down to a lower gear. If you've watched any of my stuff, you know that everything is done at a fast rate, and that's why all my drills are on full speed. Right. So I'm going to work my way across and I know that I need to get right over to there, keeping back from the steel because of course I need to get the main insulation, my rock wall insulation in there and I will, I will talk about the hybrid roof as well, um, quite possibly today. Right. So there's a series of holes drilled in there now. Um, where's my nips, David? There they are. Right, so what I want to do now is get this cable over to there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull myself off enough off that reel to get myself over there, which I have done. And I'm going to feed it through. Like so. Right, so that's all right there. I'm now going to drop that down through the light hole. Can you see that, David? Yeah. So there's my first light. Happy with that. Where's my next one? There it is. I'm going to pull back the excess there, because obviously I don't want loads up in the, the void. Pull a little bit more off there. Ooh. That there will be my middle light. There we go. You haven't got this side there. And then... There is my, that will be my first light. I'm just leaving a bit extra on there so you can see them. I don't normally leave that much to be fair. Um, and then that there will run to my light switch. So I'll cut that off. And what we're gonna have to do with that now is get a hole drilled in. Where should we put that hole in there? need to get that last bit of cable to my light switch. I've already determined that my light switch is going to go there. Um, so what I'll try and do is get a hole in there. Got a hole in that last one. Try and feed that through. I'll explain where that's going and why it's going there in a second. Right, so I've got the cable there. That's what I wanted. Um, I'm just gonna push that through. Get rid of that extra bit there. There we go. That's all gone. Right, so what's gonna happen is my light switch is gonna be on the side here. I'm just gonna go over the top of that one there and pull it down there. So that'll be my light switch. Um, as you know, and what we'll explain later on, we um, we feed all our cables through, from the outside, so every, everything's clad on the outside. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna write on, no, not everything's clad on the outside at all. Let me explain that. So we, ins we insulate it with plasterboard and then all the cables are run externally. And before anybody comments, it is within regs and everything is RCD protected. 
So I'm going to put right on there external lights. So when I've got the rest of my cable there, I know exactly what that is. So external lights, I'll write it twice. So there's no mistake in that. So that will go through there. So you can see there now I've got light, 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 and then to light switch. So that's the first one done. Um, what we're going to do now is mark up for the internal lights. Now, experience tells me that six spotlights is generally enough. In fact, I know it's enough in um, a 3 by 3 so there will be six spotlights in this. So what we've done, we've found the centre of the room. That's where a spotlight will be. And I'll show, you the, I'll show you the distance we put them in a minute. So we'll have one there and we'll also have one here. We've also decided that we are coming in uh, 600 on each side like that because if we'd have come at seven which i would have liked to have done there then we would have hit that timber there so we've dropped it <coughs> excuse me we've dropped it to six so that's good also what we do then as well is we come off the back wall 700 mil and also off the front wall 700 mil so what i'll do now i'm just going to mark that up like that yeah it's clearly marked and i can't make any mistakes again 700 there so that that will be my line there again this one here will be 700 and this one here will be 700 so i'll show you how now i'm going to mark the lights out um string line david where did that go right so david's got string line so what i'm going to do now i'm going to pop that up in there if it'll hold it will. I'm struggling to pull that up. Right, so there's my 700 light. There's my first one. Can you see that line, David? Yeah, so that will be my light line. This one here will be my next one. Again, pull it. It's hard still, this one, an index finger. That ain't working. Right, so there's my two 700 lines. 700 in from the front wall and 700 in from the back wall. I'll get, I'll get my pen now. Right, so what did we decide on? We decided on 600 in, didn't we, David? So I'll hold my tape like that. I'm looking at the 600 mark there. And I'm going to put a cross on the ceiling. That will indicate where that spotlight is there. Again, same here put a cross on the ceiling that will indicate where that one is there so i've got a good response from these videos um, and i thank you for all your comments and all there's been some really nice comments so i appreciate that um, it's so difficult but the finger missing right there it is i know it's there and what i'm doing i'm doing that line now i'm just visually seeing where that chalk line is there so I know that that'll be a spotlight as well. And again, I know that 15, let me do it from that way. I'm left on right handed rather. Um, I know that the center of the room is 1500. So that there will be that spotlight. I won't lie, I'll be glad when this is over and I've got other people helping me because it's getting a little tedious and boring. Right, so there's my six spotlights. Right, that's where I know I'm going to go. Can you see them, Dave? You've looked up and seen them, yeah? Yeah, so that there is the approximate location for all the lights once they're fit. Um, what I'll do then, this is what we generally do. Let's do it there so you can see it. I'll draw the build out like that. I'll mark the lights so we know they're 700 off the front and off the back wall, yeah? And we've got one there and one there so that distance there is 1500 and then there and there 600 and what i'll do then this is what we generally do because somebody might come after me and do the second fix we'll take a picture of that and then it's there it's logged isn't it so once this ceiling is boarded we know exactly where these lights are going there we go um, and then it's logged, isn't it? So what I want to do, 
my light switch is over here, yeah? So we want to work back from the light. So I'm looking at these now and I'm thinking, right, if I go from there to there to there to there to there to there, which is not quite right. It's not going to work out for me because I'm over there and I want to get over there. So I'm going to go from this one. Let's try this one. There to there to there to there to there to there and then down to the light. So what did I say, David? Was it that one first? That one, yeah. So that one, that one. That one, that one, that one, that one. Right, so this will be the last light on the circuit, if that makes sense. Yeah, does that make sense? Right, let me get a step up. Right. So what I need to do now is get my one mil cable, twin and earth. Let me just show you that as well. For those that don't know, um, it's one mil. That's the cross-sectional area of the conductor. Um, and twin and earth simply means uh, two conductors and an earth which is the earth is bare obviously you'll put earth sleeving over that and there's your two conductors so that's your one mil twin and earth um it's certainly sufficient for the low volt um not for the low voltage halt for the um for the gu tens that we'll be putting in here the led gu tens so that's it that's your one mil twin and earth okay yep right so i need to start there and work my way back so in my mind, I'm thinking of the route I'm going to go. Again, I've got my 10 mil drill bit on there. What I need to do is get through here. Now, you need to remember that you've, um, that you've put rubber on this roof. So the last thing you want to do is put it all up in the roof. But I also want the cable tight up in the corner. So I'm going to pop a little hole in that there. I have done and there because I'm gonna move along to that light there what we've started doing and what I forgot to do here because I weren't cutting with the chop saw is I'll just show you now what we started doing is taking the corner can you see that David taking the corner off the noggin so we'd remove that before we fit it and then we've got holes all the way along which would stop us having to do this but I forgot so here we are doing it now um Right, so I'm in one mil cable. I want to get back to that first light. Um, we'll see there if I've gone through enough. Which I haven't that way. Uh, I'll go that way instead. So that there, I know is enough to get me to that light. I'm going to pull off a little bit of cable, which will get me to that light there. It doesn't have to be a continuous loop because of course you are going to cut it when you come to wire your lights up again I'm just struggling to get that through there it's such a better idea to cut the corner of the noggin off I'm just going to bend that cable a little bit so it'll go around the corner there we go it's gone through Right, so that's my lights there. Davy, um, are they one mil? I can't see, mate. Yeah. yeah, so we've got some one mil cable clips. This is where I think I'm going to struggle because um, I, can't, I couldn't hold the twist nails the other day, so I might have to get Davy to nail them. We'll see. Right, ox, ox, all the ox tools I'm going to give away, you just need to like and share. We'll see what happens in now, David. So I'm going to cliff that. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I think, David, you might have to do this for me. Let's try. I feel like you're really shaking my finger again. Right. That's fine there. What I'm doing. I might have to get you to do it, really. What the aim of the game is, is to keep the cable tight to the roof. And I'll explain when we do the insulation as to why we're keeping it tight up. Right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to run the cables because I can't, I can't grab the clips. And I'm going to get Davy to clip them. But I'll run the cables first um, and we'll see. You'll see what I'm doing there. So I'm going to pull off enough cable there. 
I've already pre sorted What I need to do now is get from there to there. So I'll send that cable through there. Again, through that one. Right, so, because I'm not clipping these, I'm just gonna hold that up like that. When that's clipped there, there'll be enough there, so that's good. Um, this one here, where are we? We're there. So that'll go there like that. Um, I knew there were gonna be, once I damaged my finger, I knew there were gonna be aspects of this job that I just couldn't do. Um, that will be enough to get me onto that one. So basically, I'm going to put on a bit of a time lapse because David's going to jump on clipping now. So that, and then what we'll do once it's all clipped, we'll go back. So literally, I'm going to go from that light to this light to that light to that light across to that light and then back to that light and then down to the light switch. Very much the same as the outside. Right, so David's um, jumped up and clipped it for me. You can see there, look, he's kept the cables tight to the, to the, to the underside of the OSB3. There's enough cable there to go to the spot. You see that little there? So we've, we've cut them um, and we've taped them together simply just because I like it and it's nice and tidy like that. So you can see that light there is going to this light. It then goes over there. It feeds through the front. The cable's pushed back so we can get the rock wool in there. It comes then down to this light. It drops across to that light. It goes to the back of the building. We've drilled a couple of holes in the joist there. We've come to that light there. We've gone up to the front there. And then we've gone round and we've followed the other cables. And then we've dropped it down the outside here. Again, I've marked it up to clearly show which one it is. And that there will get clipped to the outside of that wall at a later date. And we'll come through there to the two gang light switch so that is the first fix for the electrics it is as simple as that that's all that we need to do at this moment in time we can now start insulating um the walls <coughs> excuse me and the ceiling um the insulation is still up on the roof because it's still quite cold so what i'm going to do i'm going to carry on with the walls get all the walls done and possibly insulate the roof tomorrow but we'll see what time it is once we're done um what you must do you see the glue there david that glue needs to come off, um, and I'll tell you why. It needs to come off because when that PIR insulation goes up, it needs to be tight to the ceiling. When I insulate the ceiling, I will talk about hybrid, um, warm and cold, low occupancy. The reason why we do it the way we do it as well, because um, I know that it is a hot subject for you for some of you anyway. Um, but I'll talk about that when we do the ceiling, which may be today, maybe tomorrow. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna insulate the walls. We're gonna use this 50 mil insulation there. That is more than sufficient for these rooms. 50 mil is fine. The insulation wants to go in. It wants to go tight to the back of the OSB. Um, so what we'll do, um, it's... The reason why I get these cavity bats, um, they're designed for when you build a house, so it's the insulation in between the breeze block and the outer skin of the wall. Um, I get them there at that size because it's a lot easier to cut than full eight before sheets. So they are 450 wide and 1200 long. So what we'll do, we'll cut a piece at, at the 450 high, put it in there. We'll put another piece at 450 there as well. And we'll work our way along. That will mean the insulation will be 900 all the way along. And then we'll put our noggins in. It's the quickest way that I've found to do it and the easiest way. Um, but that's that. On this wall here, see there, David? We, we'll put three sets of noggins in there just because that's the door wall and we want that as strong as possible. And we're also going to put some plasterboard carriers in. The plasterboard carriers, excuse me, I think I'm getting cold. Um, the plasterboard carriers, so what will happen there? That plasterboard will come there, but there's nothing to fix it to there. So what we will do, we will get some 4B2 and we will fix it through there. To there so when that plasterboard is fixed it's fixed there and it's also got a fix there as well which you want you want good solid fixing so there'll be a noggin all the way up there as well to uh, plasterboard carrier sorry all the way up there to fix that um and that's it basically so i'm going to cut that with a handsaw like we normally do um i'm going to get it cut in here i'll put on time uh, what we'll do um i'll cut a couple of bays first and then we'll stick on tile lats. I'll do that full wall and then I'll show the knockings going in. Right, so I'm gonna take the measurement. Don't forget now, um, you want these as tight as possible. If they're tight as possible, then you need to be getting um, some spray foam, some, um, what's it? I've forgotten what it's called, expanding foam. 
in the gun. So again, I'm locking my tape off there at the measurement I want. I'm going to cut that down now. Just a hand saw. Cut it as square as you can. And that will go in there like that. I've actually made that a bit loose. Look, kind of, what an idiot. Um, so what I'll do there, I'll get a little bit of foam in there. That's absolutely fine with a bit of foam, as long as it's all insulated. I'll make this one fractionally tighter. What's going on there is um, the fact that I can't hold my tape properly either. So that's two. There you go, that, that one's too tight now. Right, so that's fitting there now. So you can see that I pushed it back to the OSB. Yeah, um, that's, that's how that should be. I'm going to work around there now. So I'm going to put you on time lapse and I'm going to do this full wall. I'll get round the corner there to there um, and then we'll jump back on noggins just so you can see how it's going to work out because every wall's the same then. Um, you'll get some plasterboard carriers in there. You'll get your rows and noggins in. I'll fully insulate it and then we'll move on to the next walls on time lapse. Right, so, I mean, you see this one here, there's a little tip for you there. I've made it tight, you do want it tight, right? So I've got it in a little bit, I'm going to use one of these offcuts, get it down to where it wants to go. And then tap it home to where it needs to stay. Again, just pop it on top there, and that'll just send it down. So if you made it a bit tight, which you do want to be tight as well, one of your noggins, which will be your noggins as well, um, and a hammer and you're in. Um, I've just explained them as well. All the noggins there... They are the offcuts of these uprights, so hopefully you haven't skipped them and you've saved them because they will be your noggins. So I've got my insulation around there now, and it's all 900 high, which is what we want. It's pushed tight back to the OSB, which is also what we want. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start putting some noggins in. Um, if Debbie just comes over, you'll see this wall. So the insulation is obviously 450, two 450s is 900, so that's as raw noggins down there, that's absolutely fine. This one here, I'm going to put extra noggins in, so I'll put a 450 piece in. I'm going to put a noggin there, another 450 piece, a noggin, another 450 piece, a noggin, and then infill the last bit as well. Um, so I'm just going to get that in there now, uh, see how this goes. Again, I'm going to use... This is going to take a bit of time, this, because I'm going to use the circular saw. We're not opting for the mitre saw. Um, we're just going to go down this road now. We've started, so we'll finish that way as well. Um, not use the nail gun. Not use the mitre saw. Only use this little beast, which has been um, really good, really. Right, Debbie, can you see that? I've set, I've set the, um, the depth of the saw to the correct depth. Just so it's just going to go through, and with a bit of luck, this will pop straight in. Um, and see, it's obviously tight there. Obviously, until it gets flat, you've obviously increased the length of it, haven't you? Because it's going in at an angle. I'm probably being a bit a little overzealous with the tightness of that, but. I'm going to send that down now so it's on the top of the insulation. Which it is now, so that's in a good position now. Right, so we nail and screw, we generally nail um, noggins. Absolutely fine screwing them if you want. Um, or you can nail them. I'm going to tie that one in there like that. Obviously... That double timber there is too long, so I'm going to spike that through. Like that. I'm going to get another one in the back over there. You see that, David? Yeah. Oops, skipped off. So that's in. That's a nice solid noggin. What I'm going to do now, I'll drop another bit of insulation in there. I'll just show you that going in. I'll explain it a bit better. Uh, just cut myself a piece of this. Again, finger scribe that down. It's certainly good enough for what is required. So 
that again is 450 high. You see there, because it's going in at an angle, it's difficult to get in. So what I'll do then, I'll get a block of wood. That's into where it wants to go, stick down there. Send it down to where it wants to go. And then another noggin will go there. Now, these are your off cuts from your uprights. So that pile over there is what we're gonna use for these noggins. So what we'll do, I'm gonna do two and then you'll see how we fix them. Um. Thank you. Uh, just on the floor there would be great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. That's me nugging cut. So I've got my insulation to get me the right height. So again, you see it going in, David. Look, obviously, when it's on an angle, it increases its length. We can get it in square. I'm now tapping that down. I'm on my insulation there. And the hammer it back to make sure we're flush there, look like we are there. So, I mean, you can nail it or you can screw it with these. I'm going to up down the screw root simply because the finger is killing me. Um, Stay it through there, look, David. Can you see where I'm nailing it, mate? Uh, screwing it, rather. So that's tied that one in there. Again. I can't get into screw that that way, so I'm going to spike it like that. You see that? That's good enough for that now. Right, so we've got the next one. I'm just going to show you this one going in, and you'll see where I'm screwing it, and then we'll pop you back on time lapse. As by magic, one appears. Thank you, David. Did I say that you'd also been to college as well, David? Yeah, yeah David's been to electrical college. That's where he actually came from, but he's decided that he much sooner preferred doing joinery. <laughs> right, so that one's in there. We want to get that one in there. Again, I tapped it down, look, and it's on the insulation. So you, you don't even have to look like, really. You just. You'll feel it when it's gone down. It's flush there as well, which is what you, what you want. So screwing this one now, or nailing it. If I was nailing it, um, I'd, should, I'd, I'd nail it exactly the same way I'm going to screw it. So first of all, I'm going to screw it through there because I can get into there. Now you have two choices with this one. Um, you can either screw it through there like that. Yeah, so that will spike through there into that. Or you can screw it through there at a steeper angle like that, which is what I will be opting for. So that there, that's your noggins in there. So what I'll do, I'll work my way across there. Of course, I'm going to put another noggin there, insulation noggin. And then I'm going to noggin right around there. When I get to this part, I'll take you back off time lapse and I'll show you plasterboard carriers on here and there as well. And I'm also going to insulate, carry on insulating up to the ceiling. That's why you don't want to be throwing away these little offcuts there on the floor um, because they're going to come up there. So just to answer another question I know I'm going to get asked, um, why don't we cut them lengthways? Like that, cut it lengthways, get it in and put your knock in there, simply because you're gonna have this long strip there, which trust me, doesn't often get used and it's a waste of insulation. This is the most economical way of doing it. Um, you see there, the tight back, it's gonna be insulated well This as, as, a, as a, a, all our bills. So I'm gonna carry on knocking that on time-lapse. I'm gonna insulate it. Um, we'll get the tops filled as well and then we'll jump back on and show you plasterboard carriers. Um, right, that's the wall fully insulated, um, various little gaps, I'm going to go around with the expanding foam, um, I'll just show you that now, um, I'll go around the expanding foam and I'll just infill any little gaps I can see 
There's not many to be fair, it's not, not too bad this one though, is that one I'm... Um, like I say, I'll just go around and give it a final check when I'm done. Um, you you want to seal it all up. Like I've said before as well, don't opt for the gun, um, the foam rather, without the gun, because the foam without the gun is a nightmare to use. Um, it literally has a mind of its own. Get one of these, it's sort of accurate, um, unless you're Jenny, then it goes all over the place. Um, again, any little bits I've missed. I'll just go around and make sure they're all fully sealed up. So that's good. Um, oh, there's a bit under there, isn't there? Happy with that. Right, plasterboard carriers. That's the next thing on the list now. Um, if that board's plastered that way, plasterboard is rather, there's nothing to catch that board there. So we need to put something in there to catch it. Now, as luck would have it, we have some offcuts from our timbers. So I'm going to cut that. I'm going to cut it slightly small. It doesn't need to be dead tight. Um, there it is. Well, it is. There we go. Again, when I'm not being accurate, I'll, I'll jump back to it sharper. You can often see that. Again, I'm not going to bother using the square either. Just whip that off. So, um, another thing. Sometimes maths just works out. And this is the occasion when maths has just worked out. So, this timber here is 89mm deep. That is 50mm. That is 38mm, which adds up to 88mm. So that's 89. That and that on its side is 88. So there's a mil to spare. So that there just goes in like that. Insulate it first. Stick it in. That'll hold it. But of course, it will hold it, but it needs fixing. So oh, I've suddenly developed cold in the past five minutes um, so you want to get this screwed because what's going to happen here now is that's going to carry your plasterboard and you do not want any movement in that whatsoever because that's where your crack starts come from when your building's moving and you've not secured it properly and don't get me wrong you may get some drying cracks it happens but unless you Put that one in too steep. Um, unless you put plenty of fixings in, then you'll be good. So you can see there how nicely that's gone in. It's gone in tight. So when that gets plasterboard in now, we can fix there. And we can also fix... <coughs> uh, and we can also fix there as well. So that plasterboard will go like that. That one will go like that. We've got a good fix on that corner. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put a plasterboard carrier in there as well. We've got the same issue here on this piece here. That's going to flap about there and you'll get a crack. So we're going to put individual ones in there all the way down. So one, two, three. There'll be four different ones cut. I'll just, I'll just cut one and pop one in and then you know what I'm talking about. Um, again, it doesn't need to be perfect. I mean, you can see what I've done there. Look, just mark that off there. Get it cut. This one's a little bit different. You've obviously got the, the uh, depth of the, the 5B2 on the front wall. So you're gonna have to hold this one now with your hand till it screws. Watch your fingers. So that's screwed up there. Whoop. So that's screwed now, so I'll be able to fix my plasterboard there, fix it there. I'm not concerned there's a gap there, because obviously the plasterboard's going to fly straight over that. I'm going to put three more in there, and then that's that corner ready to go. We're all good there. What we will do while the foam out is out, is out as well, is we'll just fill this little hole here. Let's make sure it's working first. Um, so all you need to do with that there is just every so often, when you're going to use it, just clear the end with your knife like that and that should come out now a little test piece there now it's coming out now so what i'm going to do with that i'm just going to fill that now with insulate um, with foam sorry like that because we will be going on the outside to film to fill with rock wool but obviously we're not going to be able to see that little part there are we so what i'm going to do i'm just going to fill them when it's dry i will cut them off flush with the wall 
there. You know, it's important that you're sealing everything up. So once they're dry, we'll cut them off. We'll go around the outside. We'll push rock wool up as well. I'll show you that happening. We're also going to put rock wool in there, but I'm going to show you that as well. Right. Um, <coughs> I'm getting a bit of a cold now, um, my fingers are hurting, so David started insulating this side, he's not cheating, there's nothing to see, nothing to gain by me insulating the full building, of course I'm trying to earn, um, run a company at the same time, so we're going to insulate this, we're going to get all the noggings in, we'll put on time, that's me and David going to crash it all out, get it all finished, get it all cleaned out and then we'll talk about the roof. What happened David? David, yeah. What happened? I half a good. Um, we're gonna shoot off now. Um, so we haven't done actually much today. It's just a little video for you today. But don't forget, you need to get an electrician in if you're not competent or you're not qualified. Um, it does kill. Um, so we've put our lights in there. That's first. That's the first fix. It's called first fix. So the first fix is in for the lights. It's in for the canopy, and it's in for the main room as well. That is as far as we have to go electrical wise um, now, at the moment in time. Anyway, so what will happen now? We've obviously insulated the wall. I showed you how to do that. I showed you how we put his noggings in. I've showed you our plasterboard carriers. We've infilled these little bits here, which we'll cut off tomorrow. And we'll, um, what we're going to do then, we're going to go around Rockwell, the outside sides of the building. And we're also going to stick Rockwell up there, Davey, um, just above the steel now. Cause, so what we'll do, we'll compress a load of Rockwell in there. And then the rigid 100 mil will sit tight up to them. And that'll all, that'll all be sealed then as well. Um, but we're going to do that tomorrow because they're not feeling the greatest. So let's just run through tools quickly. And... Before I go, in case you're going to switch off now because you're not interested in this bit, a guy asked me about the 2.5 height and how we managed to stay under it. And I'm going to quickly show you because he wanted to know the height of this building as well. I'll quickly show you that in a minute. Tools we have used. I'm going to class that as a tool. You, it, it comes in really handy. You can see where we've gone round. We've formed up any little gaps we had. So the gun is good. Um, it's a foam gun. It's about 20 pounds. Well worth the money. We've used the impact driver. We've used the speed square. We've used the hammer. We've used the chalk line. A couple of old hand saws because David's obviously jumped on and give me a hand. Um, we've used the normal drill there with a 10 mil drill bit in it. And of course, we've used the circular saw, which we use all the time. Um, it's done, like I keep saying, the bulk of the work. So tomorrow now we're going to insulate that. Um, we're going to get our vapor barrier on. We'll talk about hybrid roofs tomorrow as well. Um, and what else will we do tomorrow, David? Uh, we'll possibly start plasterboarding. So to address that question that bloke asked me, 2.5 is your maximum height which you can have under permitted development. If you see that there, David, look. Yep. 2.5 that is the permitted development height you can build under um, and our building of course it's taken from the highest point of land this here would be the highest point of land but the customer's going to get all this flagged so that will be gone so we can't reference off that so what we decided was this was the highest point of land just there so with the 2.5 gauge i'm going to pop that there look and there you can see can you clearly see that david yeah, we're about 30 mil under the 2.5. So this building is permitted development because it has stayed under the 2.5 height limit. Um, and the reason we've been able to do that is because we've used the maximum size timbers we can possibly use to keep us under that. We've still got our, he was, he was, um, he was surprised that we put in this big steel. It's a 160 steel. Um, that's why we're using 5B2s and not bigger. And that's why we're using 4B2s and not bigger in the floor because you cannot, you will seriously compromise your headroom internally. I am five foot eight inches. The back of this building is 81 inches, which is 2,050. But by the time you've got a floor covering on there, um, plasterboards on the ceiling that again is going to be reduced so if you are six foot six let's have a look six one two three four five six six foot six there is the bend of the tape so you can still walk clearly in this room if you are six foot six our building slopes from front to back so you've got even more headroom at the front so that's your 2.5 that's your reason why we're using the timbers we're using and that is the end of the day so please like and subscribe it's just a little one like i say tomorrow will be bit better if I'm, if I'm feeling better um, and we'll crack on then tomorrow. So thanks very much and I'll see you tomorrow.